My name is anne katrin Klesse and I'm an assistant professor in marketing at RSM. I study consumer decision making and a vast part of my research is devoted to understanding how we can nudge consumers to make better decisions. For instance, how can we prompt consumers to eat healthier, save money or make more sustainable consumption decisions? In this video, I will tell you about my research on sustainable consumption. Sustainable consumption means consuming products that have a minimal impact on the environment. When it comes to food choices, there are significant differences in how sustainable food products are. For instance, consuming meat is not very sustainable. In fact, the Union of Concerned Scientists listed meat eating as the second biggest environmental hazard facing the Earth. Artificial meat or insect-based supplements are more sustainable alternatives instead. So if you want to engage in sustainable consumption, you might consider choosing a bagel with insects rather than chicken for lunch. Does this sound tempting or disgusting to you? Well, most Western consumers find the prospect of consuming insect-based products, artificial meat or even recycled water that comes from the toilet, disgusting. Disgust is a strong emotional reaction and presents a barrier to more sustainable choices. Together with Janet Geipel and Konstantinos Haji Christidis, I explored language as a means to reduce disgust and increase consumers' likelihood to try such sustainable but aversive products. For example, let's consider a Dutch consumer who orders food at a bagel's place, offering a bagel with crickets. Would the consumer be more likely to choose this insect-based bagel when she reads the menu in Dutch, her native language, or in English, her foreign language? We conducted four experiments to answer this research question. In each of the experiments, we described food products, such as recycled water, artificial meat, or insect-based cookies, either in participants' native or foreign language. For instance, in one experiment with Dutch participants, half of the participants received the material in Dutch and the other half in English. Keeping everything else constant, we found that describing the product in a foreign language increased consumers' likelihood to try it and eventually consume more from it. This effect cannot be due to lack of understanding when the description is in a foreign language because all our participants were proficient in the foreign language that we used. So why do you think this happens? In one of our experiments, we measured participants' feelings of disgust towards the described product. Our findings show that participants who received the product description in a foreign language reported lower disgust. This reduction in disgust explained why participants in the foreign language group were more likely to try the product. An important question is what drives the reduced emotionality of foreign language? According to the emotional context of learning hypothesis, a language gains emotionality by being learned and used in emotional contexts. A foreign language lacks this emotionality because it is used predominantly in non-emotional contexts, such as the classroom. The assumption is that experiences and associated emotions are stored together with the linguistic context in which they occur, and are thus more easily accessed when the same language is used at retrieval. Our findings provide an example of how research and decision-making can bring new insights on what prevents consumers from making sustainable choices. In a second step, it then allows the development of concrete intervention strategies, such as language or communication. Realizing that language and emotionality are connected is not only important in the context of sustainable consumption. Next time you read news in a foreign language or order food from a restaurant menu in a different language, be aware that it can influence your feelings towards the options and impact the choices that you make.